so the question is, what is my experience in the woods? Well, an excruciating amount of time has been spent in the woods by me, both as a survival, evasion, resistance, and escape instructor, as well as in my current job. And these aren't just me sleeping you know, on a line looking at the horizon. These are scenarios in which I'm either doing some type of deep reconnaissance or scenarios in which I'm doing some type of evasion. Beyond my military experience, I also have been to multiple tracking courses, both human tracking and other types of tracking, as well as counter tracking courses. So we have a lot of very interesting and a lot of very fun experience. Now, beyond that, for my people who are very familiar with recce type work, you'll understand that this is a somewhat thin video, that we don't go over everything. And that's for a reason we can't give away all the secrets. There is still stuff that is protected. And for people who don't know as much about this, you have to understand that when it comes to reconnoitering, when it comes to becoming deadly out in the woods, this is a topic that just doesn't take 30 minutes or 40 minutes, however long this video is. This is something that takes years to become proficient at and a lifetime to master. Now, with those things being said, in the following series of about 10 to 20 videos over the next several years, we will be delving into a topic that I find near and dear to my heart, and that is how to become deadly in the mountains. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. So guys, now on these videos, we want to thank our biggest sponsor of the channel, and that is going to be Brownells. A big thank you to them. They are very based. Of course, the sponsor for this particular video is established titles. Now, we will be talking about them in a little bit, but a big thank you to them as well. Definitely go check out all the links in the description. Thank you, guys. Now, if you guys don't already know, the comment section is a little out of control. Now, what I want you guys to do here is, you know what? In many cases, your knowledge may eclipse mine. You know, you might just be this kid in the rural south or living in the mountains of Appalachia and you just know the mountains like the back of your hand and you have some really valuable input. I want to hear it. I also want to hear legitimate questions from you guys. So get in there. Let's make the comment section for this particular video a place of learning. Even if you have a dumb question, more than willing to answer it because it's only going to make us better. So make sure that you get in there, guys. Now, without further ado, for my ladies, for my gentlemen and for my often forgotten but most certainly not by me. Booney hats. Welcome to the channel. Guys, we are going to be going over recce loadout. And the question is, what is recce? What is reconnoitering? Let's get into it. So when it comes to recce, what we're talking about is a light reconnaissance role. We're going to assume, for the purposes of this video, that we're looking at about approximately a week in the woods of a lot of off-the-trail travel. Now, if you've done a lot of backpacking, a lot of hiking, but it's all been on the trail, um, you might be a little bit kind of misled by the distances that we're talking about because you have to be, you have to understand that when we're talking about the distances for this video, we're talking about off trail and that is significantly more difficult. Lots more branches to step over, lots more of challenging terrain that's not paved. So, you know, uh, 20 miles on trail is, is somewhat tough. 20 miles off trail is one hell of a trek. So just so you guys are aware. Now, when it comes to recce, we're not looking to get into a gunfight, but we are going to be prepared for it. So our combat loadouts that we're carrying is gonna be a little bit different for some type of direct action role or a movement to contact type role. So you have to understand that things are tailored for this specific mission set. And beyond that, our gear, what we're wearing, the type of camouflage that we're wearing is all going to depend on the environment as well. So. Obviously, where we are in the Pacific Northwest, which is, it's actually a very gorgeous day out here, right, Micah? Very gorgeous. Yeah, gorgeous day out here. But you have to understand that this is going to be a launching point for you guys, because for my desert rats out there in Arizona and New Mexico or the piney woods of Texas, you have to understand that what I'm carrying, what I'm wearing, how I'm wearing it is going to be different than what you are. So you're going to have to tailor this to the environment that you are in. Now. Beyond that, we should take a moment to talk a little bit about camouflage as my hair gets messed up by this wind. Now, when it comes to camouflage, I'm, of course, wearing multicam. It's, uh, it's been an issued camouflage that I've used for a long time. It works in a lot of environments. Is it the most effective camouflage? No, but it works in a lot of environments. You have to understand that there are better camos and there are worse camos out there. You need to find the camouflage that is going to work in your environment wherever you're at. And we're mostly talking about continental United States stuff here for no particular reason. Now, 
with those things being said, let's get into it. So there's a couple, I guess the best way I want to put it is when it comes to reconnoitering, I like to put everything kind of into a box when it comes to how we're setting up our gear. And for my military types out there and for my people who've been through a lot of legitimate courses, I guess the best way to put it is we're going to shape everything that we do and how we should set up our gear around the acronym SILS, Sierra Lima Lima Sierra. That stands for stop, look, listen, smell. So what does that mean? So essentially, for those who are not familiar, SILS is one of the most, and perhaps not maybe the oldest, but one of the most common phrases that has been adopted and changed over time, all the way from the Rhodesians to further back. And it is a common usage. And what it stands for is during a patrol, combat patrol, recce, whatever you're doing, it's important that you maintain situational awareness. That situational awareness can be increased by using SILs. So what we're going to do is as we're on patrol, we're walking periodically, depending on how intense that environment is, how close we think an enemy might be, or whatever type of contested environment we're in, we're going to stop. Typically, we're going to take the moment to take a knee. We're going to stop. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look because sound does travel for quite a distance and it is very unnerving to step on a branch and to break a branch and to create that noise. But you know what travels much further than sound? Light. Depending on your environment, that light is going to be a much bigger chance of giving yourself away. And what I mean by that is if I am one mountain over from somebody and I am visible to them, that is much more dangerous to me than me stepping on a branch and cracking it a full mountain away from somebody. So you have to understand that looking is one of your most important skills, one of your most important uh, perceptions that you can use. So look, look at the environment, look around you. Is there th things that are disturbed? Are there signs of humans? Do I see broken twigs? Do I see grass that's bent over from a footprint? These are things to look for. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna listen. Now, when we're listening, we're listening for anything. Sounds of animals are, is a great one. Depending on, on the area that you're in, if an animal is making sounds or if they're not making sounds, this is gonna let you know if there are potentially other animals in the area if they're already used to you. Now, beyond listening, obviously, maybe we hear gunfire. Maybe we hear a vehicle. Maybe we hear, hear a el uh, helicopter or an airplane that could possibly spot us. Lots of different things to listen for. The next thing is going to be smell. Now, this one's a lot really confusing to a lot of people who've grown up in a first world environment. And no big deal. Our, um, our country has established a very good standard of living. The best way I can explain smell is if you were right now from your house to go onto the Pacific Crest Trail, hop on halfway through the trail and start walking the trail, the people who've been traveling the Pacific Crest Trail for months and months, as they walk past you, what they will typically say to you is, wow, you smell really clean. Our world, our modern world that we live in, is laden with detergents and fragrances that are not natural to humans. We don't quite smell how a normal human being would smell. We don't smell like BO, we don't smell like oil, we don't smell like what a human should smell like. So you have to understand that being a newcomer into the woods, you're gonna smell different. And that also flip-flops. If you've been living in the woods for a while and you start smelling fragrances, smells, foods that don't belong in the woods, well, you know you're close to somebody. So these are all things to look for. So when it comes to our gear, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be shaping it around that general idea. All right, so right here, we have our pack. So based off of what we know from SILS, stop, look, listen, smell, one of the first things that we wanna think about is look, right? How does my pack look? Is it camouflaged? Uh, does it blend in with the environment? So one thing that I have right here and something that you should always have on your pack is some type of rain cover. Now, the reason we want a rain cover is twofold. One, we don't want things inside our pack to become wet. Now, there are packs that are waterproof, but if at all possible, if I can keep that rain off the pack, all the better. In addition to that, depending on the type of pack that you have, you may have a pack that's not camouflaged and that might give you away. So a pack cover is a great way to immediately establish that camouflage. And for a lot of pack covers, they're also reversible to where one side will be a woodland or a multicam and the reverse side will either be an emergency signaling color or per perhaps some type of overwhite. So if you're traveling through a snowy environment, you can flip that camo, camo over and get a different type of camouflage on your bag. Now, 
if you don't have a pack cover, if all you have is a pack, NBD. You can also add natural vegetation to your pack in order to disguise it. Now, the biggest thing is you don't want to be a walking bush, but you want to naturally camouflage it. Have the vegetation oriented in a natural way and to not look unnatural. If you look like a just moving Sasquatch, you're going to attract attention. Try not to atta attract attention, guys. Now, when it comes to our packs, there are a million million different packs out there. In fact, my camera guy, you've done quite a bit of backpacking in your day, haven't you, Micah? Oh, a bunch. Yeah, man. So as you know, uh, how many different pa you know backpack companies can you think of? Too many. Yeah. Like, yeah, like too many. There are too many. Now, I will tell you a couple ones that I generally go with. So obviously, one of my favorites are Exo Mountain Gear. I've used them for a long time. I'm not paid by these guys or anything like that. I just really like their packs. Now, there are, of course, other military types packs like Mystery Ranch, Hill People Gear, uh, I love Hill People Gear, they're great guys. Um, tons of different companies. Of course, you have your normal ones that you know of, Stone Glacier, um, Gregory, Osprey. There are a bunch of packs out there. Find one that fits your budget and that works for you. But I'll tell you a couple things that in general I like about my packs. One, I prefer some type of internal frame backpack. Now, if you are a diehard Alice type guy, you just need to have your Alice pack, good for you. Those definitely work, but understand I think that there are a lot of things going for an internally framed pack. Now, beyond that, you also want a very generous kidney pad. The reason for that is a lot of people, the first time they backpack, believe that all the weight should be on their shoulders. That is not the case. You should be putting about a solid 80 to, I'd say, 70 to 80 percent of that weight on your hips. It's going to make your life a lot better. Now, what you can also do is, as you have these packs on, you can shift the weight. So what I mean by that is, Mike, if you want to come in here a little closer. So right now, I have this guy cinched up on my hips. There is almost no weight on my shoulders right now. And that feels pretty good. As I'm hiking, invariably, my hips are going to become sore. I'm going to become tired. So what you can do at that point is you can loosen your kidney straps, and then you can put more of that weight on your shoulders, or you can do a good in-between. This is nice as it allows you to shift weight throughout the day. So if you're traveling 20, 30 miles, that's gonna be really nice to be able to shift that load and that burden, and allow your shoulders to rest, allow your hips to rest. And depending on whether you're going uphill or downhill, for a lot of people, certain types of weight distributions are gonna feel better. Some people just like to have that weight on their shoulders and they're going downhill. That's fine, you're gonna to need to find what works for you. And that can only happen by getting out there in the woods. When it comes to our packs, a couple things that you want to have in here, and this is going to be very general. This isn't specifically set up for any particular mission right now uh, or any particular trip, but rather is set up in general to give you an idea of things to have in your pack. So generally how we have it is we want to have our bulky loose items at the bottom of our pack. I'm laughing because I'm looking at my, uh, my sleeping bag at the very bottom here, this is gonna be like one of the items I use if the least amount of times. And uh, I still have it marked from the military as Jones motherfucker. So <laughs> at the very bottom, you're gonna have our bulky items. So we have things like extra clothes, or in this case, we have our sleeping bag in a compression sack. And you should have your sleeping bag in a compression sack, by the way. Beyond that, you're gonna to wanna to be able to space yourself off from the bottom of the earth. The earth is gonna be cold, especially in the mountains, the type of environments that we're gonna be in out here. So. We have some type of ground pad. Now, this is an inflatable one. Um, honestly, I think that a pad is just as fine. Like those cheap ones you see at Army Surplus stores work really well. And you can also cut those down to your body size and save a lot of space and weight. Micah, I know you do a lot of lightweight backpacking. I think that's kind of the name of the game. Oh, yeah, the, the Z-Lights. <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike is very Gucci when it comes to this stuff. So we have these. Now, in our middle, we have stuff that I might need to get to a little bit more often. So right here... What I have is I have both my bivy, bivy sack, as well as my mosquito net cover. Mosquitoes, fuck them. So I want to have a mosquito net. And then of course a bivy, I want to be able to keep myself out of the rain. Now in a recce type role, I might not be sleeping that much depending on what I'm doing, but much more so than my sleeping bag right here, I will definitely be using my bivy in order to stay out of the elements as I come to be able to sleep. Um, comfort is kind of a big thing. If you can have a little bit of comfort, that can definitely help you. Of course, be used to being uncomfortable when it comes to this type of stuff, but at the same time, if you can give yourself a little bit of morale, this is where it's at. Guys, this video is sponsored by Established Titles. I am now Lord Grantham.
because I own one square foot somewhere in Scotland. So Established Titles is a project based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, lords, and ladies. Established Titles allows people to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so they can call themselves a laird, lord, or lady. Now in return, what they do is they commit to plant a tree with every order to protect the beautiful, pristine woodlands of Scotland. Now it's also just a fun little way to get a fun little gift for friends or something. You know, you don't know what to get them? Make them a lord, make them a lady, and at the same time, you're getting trees planted. Savage Tiles also supports global charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help with our afforestation efforts. Now these title packs give you one square foot of dedicated land in Scotland. Use discount code GRAND for 10% off, but the point is, go down there, check out the link, and a big thank you to Established Titles. Again, Lord Grantham, ridiculous, but super fun. Thank you guys. Let's get back to the video. Now, in addition here, for kind of reference, I have some meals right here. Now these are just representative. When it comes to what I'm actually carrying in a recce type roll, that was for an upcoming trip, um, what I typically use is pretty simple foods. I usually use tortillas. Got to go with those as well as peanut butter. That's like my go-to meal. In addition to that, I will typically pack um, dried fruit for vitamins and nutrients as well as some type of trail mix. That is pretty much a go-to. And a big thing with a lot of lightweight backpackers is also using some type of green powder to pour into your water source. So those are thoughts right there. Now, right here, towards the bottom, I have my Gore-Tex bottoms, along with underwear wrapped up in them. Um, this is important if my pants get completely wrecked to the point where I can't use them anymore, I need to change, they get soaked. I don't want to fucking die of hypothermia. Extra Gore-Tex pants. From here, going towards the top, I, of course, have my Camelback. Now, some people don't use Camelbacks. Some people will simply use some type of water bottle. That's up to you but this is my water source, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Towards the very top of my pack, I have a Gore-Tex top. Um, you don't wanna die in the rain. So having an extra top in addition to this weather layer that I have on right now is gonna be vitally important. And at the very tippy top of my pack, the most important thing, extra socks. God, as I lose all of them. Socks are important, guys. Um, when it comes to socks, get merino wool get good ones. Um, honestly, when it comes down to it, Kirtland, um, Darn Tough, tons of great ones out there. Um, get you some Merino wool socks though. They will save your life. So that is what's going into the bulk of our pack. At the very bottom here, I have a poncho. That's for light considerations at night when I'm checking a map. A poncho is always important. It can also make a very easy expedient shelter if you're doing any type of observation work. So we always have our poncho on us. Now, Probably doubly important when we're talking about what to have on your pack, that's going to be a way to purify water. So when it comes to doing that, my general system that I use is a Sawyer filter. And I think that's pretty unbeatable in terms of versatility um, as well as ease of use. So all you're gonna do is you're going to fill this bag up at your water source. So you have to think, with water, everybody needs water. So when you're going to a water source out in the woods, out in the mountains to get water, there's a much higher likelihood of you running into somebody. In a light recce type role, you don't want to run into people because when you're spotted, you're spotted. So this allows me to simply fill up my bag at that water source, screw this on, get away from that water source, and then by means of gravity, it will simply purify that water. So this bag is what you'd call dirty water. It's unfiltered water. You never drink out of it. But once it's purified, straight into your clean water source right here, and then you can drink out of it. And that is my general system. And in general, I keep that in a location that is easier to get to. So we're gonna go ahead and put that back. That is how we do our water right there. Now, on the side here, I do have a couple extra things. So I have an extra wind layer right there. So it's like a thinner weather layer. I really don't wanna die in the woods. And then on my pack, very accessible, I have my line kit. Uh, line kits are really important. It's simply going to be paracord. I have both six foot sections daisy chained together as well as 18 foot sections daisy chained together. I have about 10 each. I have 10 on this, seven on this, I lost a couple. Uh, biggest thing with your line kits is make sure that you burn the ends, otherwise those will slowly fall apart. And you need those for putting up shelters, for fixing things. Always recommended to have your line kit on you. Now, 
the very top of my clamor pouch right here, I'm gonna have my mission essential gear to my very important gear that I need to get my hands on. So things that I need to get my hands on often, foot powder. Honestly, you need it. So make sure that you have foot powder on you. You don't wanna lose your feet. Woo, got some wind out here, guys. So make sure that you have foot powder. You're gonna need it. It's gonna make your life way, way easier. So we have that right there. I always keep some type of painkiller on me. So I have Excedrin, I have a couple um, serious injuries from the military, so I always need that stuff on me. In addition to that, I'll typically have some type of snack. Uh, I also warm these up in my pockets as I'm moving. So we have stinger gels as well as little gummies, things like that, as well as liquid IVs. These are important to keep you going when you're starting to feel down. Make sure you keep some of these guys on you. For emergencies, if I need to start uh, fire if I need to signal somebody uh, in, an emergency in an emergency situation, I do keep a road flare on me. Um, these are awesome. You can start a fire in the worst of conditions. This is, a, of course, a last resort as uh, people will be able to see you for a very, very um, far away. So we have that right there. In addition to that, it's important to realize that you will always need wet wipes. So for my military types out there, you know what these are. Uh, keep wet wipes on you. You don't want it to get swamp ass. That's a terrible, terrible way to go. Agreed, Micah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finally, we're going to have mission essential gear up there. So when it comes to mission essential gear, whatever you need to accomplish your mission, whether that be uh, light reconnoitering work, whether you have a spotting scope, a range finder, whatever you need up there, thermals, what have you, have them up there. Also, extra ammunition. Uh, when it comes to ammunition, this is always kind of a hotly debated topic. Do you want to keep extra ammunition in the magazine or on stripper clips with a quick feeder. It's up to you. Uh, in general, I think magazines are perhaps the better way to go. Um, they do take up a little bit more bulk, but ultimately the weight is pretty negligible and uh, that does work pretty well. So that's a quick note there. Now, as far as on my other pad right here, we just keep a surprise little grenade. Always good to have. Surprise grenade. Surprise grenade. So in general, guys, that is my pack setup. Now, from there, we need to talk about a couple more things. Specifically, I'm sure some people have some questions about the boonie cap. Why is it stitched down in the front? Very simple. By stitching it down in the front, this is one, gonna make me look ally as fuck like a Brit. But two, the added benefit is that it creates a permanent crease right there. So that when I'm bringing my gun up, uh, the boonie cap has a bad kind of habit of slouching down. So this allows me to keep a nice V. So when I have my gun up, I can always see through it. I don't have anything going on. Booty caps are awesome. They keep the rain off you and they just absolutely rock. So I'm sure some people make fun of me for having the string up front, but you know, it's windy as fuck. And you know, it's not cool losing your fucking hat in the wind because I've seen it happen multiple times. Now going down from there, we of course have our kit set up right here. So when it comes to our chest rig setup, there are a lot of different ways to do it. I've used this one for many, many years um, in both military and civilian use. And this is a Mayflower Gen 4 rig. So first off, we have six magazines on us. We have one, two, three, four going across as well as two extra right here. So this gives me make my combat loadout of six magazines plus one in the gun. That is your general combat loadout and is what I generally recommend. Beyond there, what do I have going on in this? We have, of course, a surprise grenade. Always a surprise grenade. Grenades are always good to have. Okay, now also behind our chest rig right here, we do have a pouch to include maps, mission essential gear, all that type of stuff. So that is going to be good to go. Now, beyond that, what do I have at the front here? So I have tourniquet right there. It's going to be important to have a med kit. I do have a med kit on my pack as well, um, both trauma kit as well as a boo-boo kit, right? Things for with band-aids and antiseptic. It's going to be important to have that because a small cut will still kill you if it gets infected. So make sure you take care of yourselves. Have a Leatherman, it's going to be important to have. And then finally, have a couple of random things right here. So first off, you never know when you're gonna need a lighter. And in addition to that, uh, we also have tape wrapped around it. That way it's a multi-use item. We have that, we have our headlamp. Um, most important is going to be having your red light. What I typically do is I tape over the white light on this to make sure I'm only using red light, understand that with certain maps that you're gonna lose the contour lines looking under red light. So be used to using a map in those types of conditions. We of course have our <laughs> glow sticks. You never know when you're gonna need one, do a rave, that type of set, stuff. So if you're planning on carrying a radio, you're with a like-minded group of individuals, um, a couple things to consider. Radio emissions are very easy 
especially on the type of radios I imagine you have, like a Beofang or something like that, are, are quite easy to triangulate and to track and to capture. So understand who you're dealing with. Um, and then if you can get some type of crypto radio, they're out there, persistent systems for one. And uh, also think about your cell phone. Your cell phone is literally a tracking and listening device. So think about that. Okay, so we've talked about our chest rig here, a couple other things. So we have our jacket right here, right? So in general, you want a three-tiered layering system. So you want a base layer, you want a insulating layer, and you want a weather layer. So our base layer, um, I typically recommend some type of synthetic. Um, the general adage is cotton kills because once uh, cotton gets wet, does not insulate you, you will freeze to death and die, and that is not cool. So some type of synthetic layer or wool works as well, or silk. Um, so we just have a simple synthetic t-shirt. Uh, beyond that, some type of insulating layer. Now it's not too cold right now, so we just have a nice little waffle top from my military days. Those work really well, as well as a wool layer or whatever you might need. Uh, a down will compact down really well. However, uh, just be aware of the pluses and minuses to each of those. We're not gonna get into it too, too, uh, too much today. And then finally, your weather layer. So something to block the wind, to block the rain, to ensure that all those layers under that don't get wet. And that is your general layering system. Now, beyond that, when it comes to pants, a lot of people argue for and against Gore-Tex pants. Um, I typically don't wear Gore-Tex pants unless it's getting really, really bad. In general, I'll do my pants along with some type of gaiters. So gaiters are always the way to go, always have them on you. Um, I've used these things for close to three, four, uh, I've used these things for like six years now and they absolutely rock. So gaiters are gonna be important. I typically keep those on the side of my pack just so you guys are aware. Now, beyond that, if you notice in the combat pants, I'm not wearing the knee pads that stick out. Rather, I have the internal knee pads that can be covered. And the reason for that is that, especially in the woods, the woods is a greedy bitch and she will take your knee pads and she will snatch them from your combat pants and you will never, ever see them again. So I always go internal on those, um, just as a quick note. Now, when we get down to our boots, of course, we have some type of merino wool sock. And what I typically do is I will fold these down to allow sweat to escape. And then, if possible, I usually go with some type of full grain leather boot. And the reason for that is these can be treated with snow seal. So in the mountains and the snow, they will repel that water. That has, worked, that has been what's worked really well for me. Now, depending on your environment, a leather boot might not be a good option. So again, find the type of boot that's going to work well for you. In general, there's a lot of good boot types out there. Um, these are a Solos. We have Loas as well. Of course, Rocky, um, Vasque, Solomon, tons of great boots out there. Find one that fits your feet well and that works in your particular situation. Two final notes here when it comes to recce loadout. If you have some type of map, even if it's waterproof and it should be waterproof, make sure that you have it in some type of protective case to ensure that your map doesn't get destroyed. That's gonna be very important. So some type of map case. And then finally, your rifle. Your rifle is gonna be something that's going to be suited for the particular mission that you're in. We're not gonna be talking about recce rifle setup today, but in general, make sure that uh, based on the distances that you have, that you can make those shots, and that the weapon, of course, is camouflaged. According to what we originally talked about, stop, look, listen, smell. So guys, point is, there is a lot that goes into recce loadouts. Um, I could talk about this for probably another 10 hours, and we wouldn't even begin to get anywhere. So we're gonna cut this video for now. There will be more parts coming as we delve into more specific topics within this particular subject matter. Both movement, both team movements and communications, uh, weapon setup, as well as tracking and counter tracking. And to be clear, we will be going into the mountains um, in future videos with a small team, and we will be going over these ad nauseum in depth over several days, as well as having a helo with thermal technology, which will be trying to catch us. And we'll be going over all of that good stuff. So lots more to come. Really excited to give you guys my knowledge. Get in the comments. Tell me what worked, what didn't work, and any questions you might have, always willing to hear them. And as always, when it comes to this particular video, get out there and use your gear. Otherwise, you're not gonna know what you need and what you don't need. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I've got nothing else for you. You know what's cool? Shooting. You know what's even cooler? Living. Fieldcraft is vitally important, and it's something that we're gonna be touching upon a lot 
in the coming months. So make sure that you get out there, you try those field craft skills. I want you to be able to start a civilization with your knowledge and your skills that you have from these and other videos. Get out there, ladies and gentlemen. Love you guys. Can't wait for the future videos. Take care.